off and fix the vocal mix as well. Where's the 35 to 40 percent shift and then the exposures are taken. Nostalgia. I didn't really like it that weird. It'll either be on the bottom or the back of the black box. Hey guys, sorry, straight up, this video is a little bit misleading because you can't fit a full ultimate guide into just a short YouTube video, but you can fit it into a full Skillshare course, and that is what I'm here to share. But wait, don't go anywhere. I'm here to give my YouTube friends a free sneak preview. I've extracted a small segment on automatic loading, which I think will be really helpful to anybody getting into film and it might be a good little taste of what the course would be like and what I'm like and whether I know anything about what I'm talking about. And if you were to just watch it by itself, it might be probably the most useful segment for people who have just got an automatic camera. Genuinely, if you are in any way interested in getting into film and shooting film and specifically 35 millimeter, I really, really think this course will be worth your while. I've spent so much time on it. I really poured everything into it. The course is aimed at anyone who is new to film. So whether you are a complete beginner, completely new to film and photography full stop, or a professional photographer working in digital who now wants to come to film. In the introduction to the course, I explained my thesis on that and why I have structured the course for kind of everyone and didn't really leave anything out. And I also will go through exactly what the course covers and just all the details. So if you are even somewhat curious in the course, just click on the link in the bio, go to the page, watch the free introduction, which is like three or four minutes. But anyway, I'm gonna leave you with this short little segment on automatic loading. I hope it's helpful. If you have any questions whatsoever, send me a message on social media, leave a comment here. I, after doing this course, really enjoyed the kind of teaching element. So I love to post more tutorial style videos on YouTube, but slightly different to how they're normally done, just trying to like make it my own. So if you have any ideas there, or if you think there's topics that you would like me to cover both in film, but also in digital too, and just business and being self-employed, software and even sports and like all my different interests, I'd love to make different videos on them. So yeah, I'm so excited to finally launch this ultimate guide to getting started in 35 millimeter film. Let's go on to automatic loading. So most unusually, both of the point and shoots I have are manual loading. So I'll get onto them in a sec. I'm kind of mainly talking about automatic loading in terms of point and shoots. So I'm gonna use this big SLR because it's automatic, but actually in reality, like any point and shoot will probably be the same. So you'll open the back of the camera. This camera actually loads left to right, whereas the SLR I'll show you in a sec, loads right to left. So on this camera, you would literally just pop in the roll and then you will drag the lead across and then make sure it's folded in and over the other side. And then that is all, you'll just close it. Now, I won't close it now because I wanna reuse this roll in a sec. Essentially, you literally just put the film in, pull the lead across and close the door. This camera is a little bit more advanced so the film advance mechanism is much newer and much better and then once you click the door closed and turn on the camera you're good to go you're good to start shooting if for some reason on your point and shoot or your automatic SLR or any kind of automatic camera that has automatic loading if for some reason when you close the door nothing happens and number one doesn't show up on the little screen saying you know you're at your first shot just open it back up and pull the film out a little bit more it might just not have gone across enough or you might have pulled it too far and you might need to just feed it back into the roll a little bit. So I would always start off by going like less and then if you need more, you can pull more out, but you don't wanna to pull too much out because you don't wanna get as far as where your first shot is. The other reason an automatic camera might not do anything is if the battery's dead. So if nothing happens when you turn the camera on, definitely possible that the battery is just dead. In an automatic camera, you will hear when you close the door that it starts to and it basically pulls out the film by itself as far as the first shot. So when you've loaded a roll of film successfully into an automatic camera, as well as shot number one coming up on the screen, something else that often comes up is the ISO speed. It'll pop up as 200, 100, 400, depending on the film that you've just put in. So how does it know what film you've put in? Well, it's not as high tech as you'd think. 
I've got a roller color negative film here and on the side of it you'll notice this unusual little pattern. Well this pattern is called a DX code and it is what tells the camera what speed the film is at. And then you'll see here on the inside of the camera that there is these contact points. These contact points automatically read what the film speed is, which is super handy because then you don't have to set it. But in nearly all cases, even on automatic cameras, you can override that and you can choose to set a different ISO speed. Also what some people do, it's called DX code hacking, is if they Again, we'll get onto this in a sec when we're shooting, but if you want to change the ISO speed deliberately and you know you can't do it in your camera settings, you can literally get a marker and color in or scratch off different parts of the DX code to set it to a different film speed. And then your camera will think it's a different film speed. And you can look up loads of tutorials as to how to do that online. Just that's a way of forcing an automatic camera to pick an incorrect film speed. Okay, let's go over loading into a manual camera. 